but this is another story about million days that a lot of people never really know. Hi, it's Subai. Uh, my name is Jean. I grew up in Thailand and when I was 16 years old, I moved to Canada. My parents thought that it would be a better for me to study abroad, so they sold their business in Thailand so that they can afford to uh, move me there. When I was in university, I was six months away from getting my bachelor. That was when I already fell in love with EDM. I went to see Calvin Harris back in 2014, I believe, and that was when I just fell in love with music and I really, really wanted to become a DJ and producer. Monster Cat was the first record label that I type on YouTube. So I type record label in Vancouver and then Monster Cat popped up. And then ever since then, it was like a dream for me to get signed by this electronic record label. I met Ari, who is a co-founder. Actually, a little bit before that, I was six months away from getting my bachelor. I decided to drop out and how I dropped out was pretty crazy. I basically handed in blank paper during my final exam so that I didn't want to have a plan B. I wanted to go all in and that's how I dropped out. I failed all my courses on purpose. I came back, told my parents that, and they were extremely shocked because they sold their business in Thailand for me so that they can move me there. And secondly, I'm the only child. After that, my parents took out another loan to send me to an audio engineer school called Nimbus Recording. And it was a one year program. They borrowed money and student loan and stuff. And on the last semester that I was at this audio school, I met Ari, who's the co-founder of Monster Cat. And then, you know, I stayed after class because I already knew Monster Cat. I, I, like I told you, I really wanted to be there. And then uh, Ari saw that I was really passionate about it. And then he gave me his business card. I um, start sending him my demos and stuff at that time. And then he was like, this is really good, but um, you're not quite there as an artist yet, but my ass assistant just quit. Do you want to come work for me? I start my journey at Monster Cat. That was like my foot in the door. So Monster Cat asked a personal assistant to Ari. And then I worked at Monster Cat for eight years. So for six years, I was working at Monster Cat from like nine to five. And then after work, I would grind on Sabai stuff in the, in the studio, just trying to get better at music. And then I kept working on the song, John, who's like the a and R at Monster Cat Music, and then after six years, Million Days was like made, and then I showed that track to Monster Cat, and then they decided to sign that track. Million Days was the start of everything. It was the first track that I like put out, but. This is another story about Million Days that a lot of people never really know. The release date of Million Days was February 11, 2020. Yes. In December of 2019, I found out that the track got signed. Obviously, I told my parents and then they were extremely happy and proud of me. They were like, oh my god, finally, you finally got signed. This is like your dream, right? And then we were all like over the moon. We were so happy. A week before Million Days came out, my dad had a stroke and then I had no idea what to do. So I, I drove to the hospital and my dad was waiting to get his surgery. His symptom was getting worse where he couldn't like really talk. He became really forgetful. And then the, the nurse would come in to check up on him every 45 minutes. And then they would ask him three different questions. One of them would be like, do you know where you are? And then rather than my dad saying he's in the hospital, he would just like look around and then just kind of like couldn't answer that he's at the hospital. Second question that the nurse asked was, do you know what date it is? My dad would keep saying like September 11, October 11, like November 11. So get the wrong month, the month is wrong, but the number 11, the only thing that is significant about that number is it's the release date of Million Days. So even when, when my dad was like a vegetable, you know, like all he could think about like the 11 is a really important day for G. So that's how much like, Million Days meant to me. And then uh, when the song came out, I think everyone around me was saying that like, Gene, this is crazy. You had zero followers, but the song is like doing really well. It was doing like 20 or 25,000 streams per day, which is like unheard of for like a, a brand new artist with, with no followings. But I remember at the time I couldn't even like celebrate it because I didn't know if my dad was going to make it or not. 
And then a week after that, he finally got like a, a surgeon who was available to perform surgery on him. And then after that, he made a full recovery. It was like a miracle. So I got my dad back. Ever since then, I just keep working with Monster Cat. We put out where it all began together. I just counted this with Steven. I think I have about 15 originals with Monster Cat. And then like a bunch of remixes after. And then I ended up working at Monster Cat for eight years in total. And then on eight years, it just doesn't make sense anymore because my supply start to like pop off and then I felt like I really needed to invest. I, I started to feel like I, I don't know, I just couldn't really work and then do Sabai. I ended up like quit and then go all in with the uh, Sabai and that's when I started traveling, grow myself and, and just meet more people and it was 2021. It was when EDC came back I think. There's this artist named Elefante who's a big inspiration of me since 2015. I guess he's like Asian and I felt really relatable to him. At EDC 2021, Elefante performed at Kinetic Field, like the main stage at EDC, and he played Million Days. And that was when I like freaked out. I was like, oh my God, they just played this song. I think like literally like um that night I came back to the hotel and I produced another track that's like, inspired by Million Days because I wanted to, I, I had it uploaded on my SoundCloud and I named it Elefante X Sabai, thinking that like maybe one day, you know, like when I meet him, I'll get to show him the song. But like crazy, like literally a month after that, his manager just reached out to me out of the blue and then he told me that Elefante is doing a big heavy glow tour and then he wanted Sabai to go on tour with him. And it was the 16 tour stops in the US and that was when I just start performing with Elefante and I saw so many people came out to me to to see me like early for my shows and stuff and that's what gave me confidence to build and do my own solo like a uh, headline tour. I It ended up being a collab, a uh, co-headlining tour with Huang who is another collaborator on Million Days with me and then that tour was last year and then we did like I don't know like around like 15, 16 stops as well. Ever since then I just kept putting out more music, touring and invest in my brand and my team. I really grew my team. I think I have about like maybe like 15 people maybe working for me now. Ever since then, it just slowly keep growing. I launched my own record label called Ikigai in January. And that's supposed to be like, just like my, my own survive thing. And right after I launched my record label, Elefante hit me up. He was like, yo, like I also want to do a record label with you. We started another record label together called Hidden Horizon, where we're aiming to focus to lift up Asian underrepresented artists, because that was how I felt like I could really help because that was the cards that I was dealt with and, and that was who I, I I felt like all my fans that came 80% of the people that show up they're all like Asian American I just kept like rinse and repeat I ended up meeting a manager that I'm like with now named Mike Lasanti who was with Prodigy so this was like, like it's like a slander Prodigy like management but now he quit to do his own management called Millennial. Right now, what I'm excited the most is I'm putting together my first body of work uh, album. It's gonna be 14 to 15 tracks and it's called uh, North Star Album. And the meaning behind this is when I finally found my life purpose and every song is a different chapter of what it took me to finally find who I am and what I'm trying to do with myself, like what my calling is. And this album's gonna come out in July and we have about 20 stops in the US. Um, that's gonna be paired with this tour as well. They're all hard to get room where, you know, I'm gonna be investing heavily in production and then all of the rooms are like a thousand capacity. So that's been like what I've been really working on now is just the album and the tour and the new visuals. And then branching into Thailand, I think my route since I'm Thai, I met Bot Cash, who is uh, a really close friend of mine now. He's like a DJ in Thailand who introduced me to uh, other artists, pop, who's performed with me tonight. I'm hoping to work with more Thai artists now because I felt like I kind of 
grew in the US and now I think it's time for the two world Thailand and US to finally collide and I'm so excited because I don't know I feel like the collaboration is gonna be so cool right my last song that just came out is called daydream in the music video for that one that I put together I put like stories I don't know if you guys have seen the daydream music video but I showed my journey from me working at monster cat me going on million days tour to uh, where I am today. Yeah, I guess that's like a short snippet of Sabai life. Really incredible. So tonight I brought out my whole family from my mom's side and my dad's side. So I'm really close to my grandparents from my mom's side. They're the one who raised me when I was in Thailand. I think they're like almost like 85 years old, you know. Today, like when Arsid reached out for me to play at like at the Together Festival, my family were really excited. So I, I invited them out. My family from my dad's side and my mom's side are literally here today. They got to meet for the very first time through through this show that I'm here. So it's really, really cool. I actually told my Asian Jake and my manager and Arsit as well that the reason why I wanted to do a show in Thailand is because my grandparents are getting really old now and I don't know how much time they have left. I really hope that I could do a show this year so that if they can come out, I think it'd be so cool for them to see me from like a baby, you know. They came out and then they were there the whole time watching me perform. It was a really surreal feeling. It's in such a full circle. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the story.